Welcome. So we saw for linear momentum that we had an equation that the external force was equal to the change in the momentum of the system over time. And we have a similar relationship for angular momentum where we have the external torque, and this is the sum of all the external torques, is equal to the change in angular momentum of the system. Right? We're using L for angular momentum because we've run out of a lot of other letters. So the torque external is equal to the change in angular momentum of the system over time. We get an interesting thing that if the external torque is zero, right, we're saying that all external torques sum to zero, then what this means is we're saying zero is equal to DL of the system with respect to time which means that the derivative is equal to zero. And if the derivative is equal to zero, then we're saying that the angular momentum of our system is constant in time. So this is our conservation of angular momentum We can say that, right, the angular momentum for one initially plus the angular momentum for two initially, so on and so forth, is equal to the angular momentum for one final plus the angular momentum for two final, so on and so forth. In this class, we're not going to deal with angular momentum in multiple directions, but we can treat it as a vector quantity for this. But this is only if, right, our external torque is zero. So our next question is, how do we ensure that our torque external is zero? And the answer to that is interaction diagram. So same thing that we do with energy, same thing that we did with momentum is the same thing we're going to do with angular momentum. So if I have a set of interaction diagrams, A, B, C, and D, and a set of connections between them, then what I need to do is I need to look at each force to see if the torque from the force is zero. Remember, torque can be zero when the force is zero, the distance is zero, or the sine of the angle is zero. So if we have any of these where we have a non-zero force, but the radius is zero or the angle uh, gives us zero, then right, the torque will be zero. And so what we can do is we can then choose an interaction diagram such that that's the case. Very often for us, we're going to have a single object in our interaction diagram, just because then we're only going to have right one or two forces interacting with the object, and we can justify that the right torque from that is zero from either r equals zero or sine theta equals zero. So, but in our general sense, right, all non-zero torques. must be inside the system. So these forces, they can have torques, they can have non-zero torques. As long as they're inside the system, then they're not an external torque, and we don't have to worry about whether they will uh, work on non-contributing 
angular momentum conservation. And then we need to track the angular momentum for each object in the system. So we choose an interaction diagram where we don't have any external torques and any external forces we can justify that they have a non-zero, they have a zero torque with the force radius or sine of the angle gives us zero. We can also look at the impulse approximation and say that some external forces can be assumed to be negligible. That is, we are going to <laughs> not worry about them because they're small compared to other forces, but only for very short amounts of time. We are saying for a very specific amount of time, if it's a small force in comparison to other forces, then a very small time times a very small force times r and theta will give us a very small torque and will not affect our conservation of angular momentum. So this is how we assure when and where and how to conserve angular momentum.